Shalom, everybody. We are back with the fifth lesson of Matan Torah by the Bala Sulam, with commentary by Rabbi Avraham Mordechai Gottlieb, who I'll be referring to as the Rebbe Shlita. Okay, got my uh, Matan Torah giving, got my piano scarf. I think we're ready to go. <laughs> There's two bullet points to the section that's quite short and it's a good preface to the coming section which is much longer and has beautiful teachings and it starts to understand the nature of our obligation we must understand why the Torah was given to Israel and two if it was only the nation of Israel who wanted the Torah then they weren't really chosen among nations to receive it the Baal Sulam begins. First of all, we have to understand why the Torah was given specifically to the Israeli nation and not to all the people of the world equally. Is there an element of nationalism here? God forbid. Only people who have taken leave of their senses could consider such a thing. Indeed, our sages have already dealt with this question. For what was their intention when they said in Avodah Zara to be in the Talmud that the Holy One, blessed be He, went around to every nation and dialect, but they didn't accept the Torah as is well known. Let's read that again. By the way, we are on page 65. Section 5 that we're on starts at the bottom of page 64 with the two headers. Again, Baal Sulam begins. First of all, we have to understand why the Torah was given specifically to the Israeli nation and not to all the people of the world equally. Is there an element of nationalism here? Heaven forbid. Only people who have taken leave of their senses could consider such a thing. The Rabbi Shlita says on the spot, only people who have taken leave of their senses could consider the possibility that God has some national preference. That is, that God prefers one nation over another. For it is possible for a person of flesh and blood to prefer one person over another or one society over another. But regarding the Holy Blessed One, who created every single created being and illuminates and gives light to all, preference is completely inapplicable. I think the Rabbi Shlita here is giving a basic psychological understanding of projection. We are all living a subjective reality, hopefully searching for objectivity and trying to reach the absolute truth, which we are taught is available, slowly but surely, we rise to it. But in the meantime, we're projecting our egos, we're projecting our own reality, our own opinions, our own view of the world. Every person is a world in themselves, we are taught. And so every person is the center of the universe. So it makes sense that a person can give preference and say, this is better than that, and I prefer this. But the Rebbe Shlita's point here, as well as the Baal Sulam's, is there can't be. Now, someone could challenge that and say, well, there's many Pesukim, there's many verses in the Torah and Tanakh that describe the Creator's love for Israel. It's not so explicit with His love for nations, but there are also Sukim verses that talk about his love for all of humanity in the sense that everyone will come to know God and experience God. So with that said, how do I understand this? How do we understand this? Based on what we've learned before, particularly in the second lesson, we spoke about Torah de Rishut Hayachid, the notion that the entire Torah can be interpreted through the single soul. You, the individual, 
from all its minor details is describing a spiritual roadmap from wherever we're holding up to the Creator Himself. And we learn that Yisrael is a code word for a state of spiritual consciousness, which is Yashar Kale, straight to God. So when it says in Pesukim, it says in verses that the Creator loves Israel, one can interpret that in a physical, material sense, that he loves the bodies of Israel, he loves the people of Israel. But through this spiritual understanding, perhaps it's saying that the Creator loves the quality of Israel, because that's his quality. It's a spiritual principle, and those who are parents can relate. Parents like it when their children go in their way. Obviously, if you're of a religious background, then you hope and pray that your children stay on the path and stay connected to the Torah and its mitzvot and the Creator. And if you're not on the path, for example, the notion of your child going into a system of spiritual reality, going into a system of religion, of tradition, then that can scare you because you know this all of a sudden going to be a large dissimilarity of form and you don't want to lose your baby. Understandable. But the same principle works with our relationship with the Creator because we are His children. So this whole notion of that we can have the opportunity to give to the Creator means that we can give Him nachat ruach, we can give Him this pleasant spirit or joy because he can be proud of us. The same way a parent can be proud of their child for doing right and following in their way, so too the Creator has given us the true and correct way to refine ourselves. And if we follow in such a path and reach Yisrael, reach Yashar Kale, which means all of our actions, speech, deed, and thought, are for the sake of heaven, that's naturally something that he would love. Because that's similar and akin to him. And he is the good that does good to the good and to the bad. Eno Movado, there's none other than him. So it makes sense that all that is good is something that he would love. And even the bad, we understand, is also good at its essence. So, let's continue. The Baal Sulam says, and continues, however, from this, it's hard to understand why we are called the chosen people. As is written, God chose you in Devarim, or Deuteronomy 7.6, since no one from another nation wanted it. The Rabbi Shlita says on the spot, for choice is relevant only when there are several possible choices, and one chooses the most desirable among them. However, God has no choice, for none of the nations wanted the Torah besides Israel. So why is Israel called the chosen nation? Good question. The Baal Salaam continues, Furthermore, the story itself is questionable. How could it be that the Holy One came with his Torah in his hand and negotiated with the people of these wild lands? Nothing like this has ever been heard of and is completely counterintuitive. The Rabbi Shlita says to the end of that statement, here, Balasulam brings up the difficulty regarding the manner in which God offered the Torah to ignorant peoples. For Balasulam assumes that they were weak spirited and backward. So, how could God offer them his Torah and negotiate with them? So, again, how can Israel be called chosen if the Creator had no choice? He asked everyone. He went to everyone else first, as we were taught. And they said no. So how could it be a choice? There's only one option. 
And then how could such a thing even happen? How could the Creator even go to those who are unable to receive it? Why start there? And that's how this section ends. The next session, next section goes into answering these questions. And I'd like to give my brief uh, interpretation and ideas regarding why this is. First of all, the creator is above space and time. He was, is, and will be, and he's beyond all that. Mind Bhagavad idea. Even the notion of infinity is a construct of his. He is beyond infinity. He's beyond all concepts that our mind can grasp. By definition, he's above our reason. So too, when we go above our reason, above our seichel, our intellect, above our das, our own knowledge, that's actually how we connect to him. Because that's also something that's a defining quality of his. He's beyond our understanding. But I digress. Because God is above space and time, obviously he knew that these nations who were seemingly coarse, backward, weak-spirited, would not be able to accept it. But he went to them anyways. I believe that that is the Creator telling us, showing us, and planting the seeds to describe that this notion of Israel that he loves, that he wants to be one with him, is actually all of humanity. Yes, it just so happens that there's people born into the inner part of the nation. But Israel as an overarching entity is more vague because those who are not Jewish can also follow the Torah. They can follow the Noahide laws or categories. There's seven laws, but really those laws go into different laws. It's a little bit deeper than the seven, but in any case, these seven categories. And they're also regarded as the nation of Israel. They're part of the nation. They might not be Jewish specifically, but they're part of Israel. And they too can reach exalted states of consciousness and at their level reach some degree of Yashar Kael, of being straight to God. They have their tools and the Jews have more responsibility, so to speak, because we have so many more laws and opportunities to go against our nature and refine our egos and to give to the other through the Torah and its mitzvah. So God offered these nations, the Torah, because in the future, at this exalted time that we pray for every day, and we have full faith, hopefully, that such a reality will manifest as we've been promised. Because we live in a program, we live in a system, and it's still loading, and it has to finish. There's a point A, and there has to be a point Z. It's a point Aleph, and we will get to Taf. And we call ourselves Israel because that's the future tense. In reality, we're Yaakovites. Israel is the second name given to Yaakov that describes his great spiritual stature. It's his spiritual name, so to speak, as opposed to his more physical name, which is Yaakov. So in reality, we're Yaakovites. The Jews of today are not necessarily Israel in the deepest sense of the word, as we've learned in prior lessons, which, by the way, the playlist is in the description as well as other amazing resources to free PDF downloads, as well as other books to purchase and the like, and this amazing learning and school of thought of Ashlag. So we call ourselves Israel because we know that's what we're coming to. We know it's not inevitable that we will reach such a state of consciousness. We call ourselves by our future reality. So to all of humanity in a way, is Israel. For the time being, there are nations and there is Israel. There are distinctions. But every person on this planet has the potential to become one with God. Otherwise, they would not exist here. Those are the words by the Rebbe Shlita. 
It's not a person that came into existence that is unable to reach their potential. All the tools are at their disposal and they have the free will to choose. So that's why I believe that the creator went to all the nations. It's because they too can, like the convert who came to Hillel, convert, so to speak, or at least take on the Torah. We're taught a very deep thing, the introduction to the Zohar. And there's deeper explanations too. Maybe we'll have a time to learn at some point. That everything is rooted in us, being the Israeli or Jewish nation. We have these inner nations, these inner wills to receive for ourselves alone. And if we're not involved in the inner dimensions of Torah, being the Kabbalah and its inner dimensions, then we don't have hope of refining these inner aspects in this generation. So if these inner nations within us are not corrected, then the outer manifestation of that lack of correction in our consciousness branches out and we see that response in the world. It's all interrelated. So I hope and pray that we merit to take on this work and to learn this very sweet Torah, which the Creator objectively wants us to learn and wants us to be involved with. Everyone at their time, right place, right time. We've all got variables, but all the great Kabbalists, not just the Baal Sulam, the Ramchal, the Vilna Gon, Baal Shem Tov, And the list goes on. It's quite extensive, actually. Say the importance of Kabbalah and the necessary requisite of us needing to be involved in it and learn it in order to bring the final redemption out of love, meaning to reach the state of Yashar Kale. Okay, I think we should end here. The next lesson, we're going to be going further into the notions of why the Torah was given to Israel and the purpose for creation. Tov, all the best. Hitoyot, see you later.